Hello everybody and welcome to part five of the SketchUp series. In this video, we're gonna start making the traditional drawer. Let's get going. Okay, so dovetails in SketchUp. Let's talk about them real quick. Obviously we've already done one, which is the single dovetail joining the front stretcher to the top of the leg. However, with larger sets of dovetails, let's say we were doing the side of a dovetail box that's about this tall and we wanted, let's say seven tails down it, for example. In cases like that, I often find it's easier to lay out the dovetails on a piece of paper first, one-to-one -one scale, as opposed to drawing them on SketchUp. The reason being, if you get it wrong on SketchUp, you've then got to shift all these lines. And if you've got seven tails, you've probably got 14 lines there to shift. If you wanted to extend them one millimeter, you've got to move each individual line one millimeter and it just becomes quite tricky to do. However, if you were to do it on a piece of paper first, you could use dividers, for example, to lay out the spacing of the tails exactly as you would lay out dovetails if you were doing them in real life. And if you're not sure how to lay out dovetails using dividers, then have a look at my dovetails tutorial to learn how to do so. And so once I've got that on a piece of paper and I'm happy with the spacing and I'm happy with how many I've fitted into the side, I'll then get a ruler, measure that one-to-one -one scale model and put that into SketchUp manually. You know, quite often you're working with ballpark figures because if you're using dividers, they're not necessarily integers. You might have sort of decimal places at the end, but it gets you in the ballpark. You can then put that into SketchUp and you'll be much closer. With the draw that we're doing in this case, I think we'll only get two or three dovetails in it. We'll see. So I'm probably not gonna bother laying them out one-to-one -one scale, but if you were to do a larger side, then bear in mind that that might be worth doing first. Anyway, let's get stuck into it. Right, so the first thing we're gonna do is make the draw front. And so this is very simple. Let's just get the rectangle tool and we're going to draw that in the cavity here. There we go. Let's get our move tool next and move that draw front out the way. Next, we're going to extrude that and I'm making this draw front 15 millimeters thick. And before we do anything, change it into a component. So next we'll do the draw sides. Now in furniture, when you're doing drawers, quite often you don't want them to go the full depth of the cavity, i.e. you don't want the drawer touching the back. There's a few reasons for this. Firstly, if you were to slightly make that drawer oversized and you push the drawer in, it doesn't go as far in as you want, then you're gonna have a bit of trouble trying to fix that. Secondly, with some designs such as cabinets where you've got potential expansion front to back, then if you make the drawer stop on the back and the rest of the carcass shrinks, then the front of the drawer is gonna poke out beyond the carcass. That's not something that will happen in this case with this design because the grain on the sides of the table is traveling in the same direction as the drawer. But with cabinets, the side grain of the cabinet is going up. And so this is going to expand and contract and the drawer will stay put. But either way, it's good practice to not make it go the full depth of the cavity. So let's see what we're working with. I am not gonna do any math here. I'm just gonna put the drawer front into position. Have a look at the back and then let's get our pen tool because I often just use that to measure things. We'll start there and go all the way to the back and that is reading 217 millimeters. So I reckon we'll extend it out about two millimeters and leave a nice little gap at the back there. So let's get that out again and do our draw sides. Now, obviously we took the measurement from the back of the drawer there, which was 200 millimeters. However, we've also got a lap dovetail on the front of it. So we actually need to add 12 millimeters onto that in order to account for that lap dovetail as well. So let's make this 212 out from the back. And then here, we're just gonna use snap tracking. If we just highlight it over that for a second and then bring it over like that, it's going to snap on there. And you might be able to see there's a little green line there showing that that's in line with the top of the front of the drawer. Makes it easier rather than measuring it bring it back like that, and then down to complete the component. So let's highlight that next, and we'll make this a draw side, and then we will extrude this to be, uh, I reckon about uh, 10. It's quite chunky, but it'll be fine. So obviously when this is complete, if I just show you where it will be, if we move it in a little bit, that'll be sitting in 12 millimeters like that, and we'll have dovetails cut in here instead with a three millimeter lap at the front there, but we don't need that just yet. Let's get another one of those on the other side. So I'll just place it down there and pick it up from a corner where we can lock it into position. That one there, cool. And then let's get a back done as well. So the back of the drawer is gonna slightly get thinner from top to bottom afterwards, but we're just gonna make it the full size for the time being, because we can easily adjust it later. So highlight that, make components, draw back. 
edit component and make that 10 millimeters thick as well. All right, let's just move these apart real quick, just so we've got a little bit more access to things and we can start drawing the tails on the front of these draw sides. In fact, I'm gonna move this clear of the, um, of the table as well, just so we're not distracted by it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is add shoulder lines to the lap dovetails and the tails on the back of the draw as well. Very easy way to do this. All we're gonna do is edit the component, get the push-pull tool, and we're gonna do the control push-pull thing. Remember, it's option on a Mac, and we're gonna drag it back like that and type in 12. All right, so there's our shoulder line there and we're going to do exactly the same on the back here. So let's just push that in. Obviously it's gonna be 10 here because that's the thickness of the back. So there's some nice shoulder lines for us to work with. We don't need to do it on the back and the front because once we've got the tails cut on the side of the drawer, we can then just trace around them exactly the same as we did on the top of the leg, and that is that. All right, so let's start playing around here. Now for this, I'm going to draw on top of the component rather than do it this way by editing the component and actually changing the component itself. This just makes it a little bit easier when it comes to changing lines and things because those lines aren't actually attached. You know, while we're drafting, it just makes it a bit easier to move stuff around. So we might as well draw it on top. So I reckon let's go for eight and then let's do six here. Cause again, it's a one to six ratio we're doing. So 12 units up, two across find the center point. Let's make that six in the middle. So we'll go three that way, three that way, five and five. Let's create the dovetails from that. Get rid of that one there, it's distracting. Nah, looks a bit too chunky, doesn't it? So what we do is we're just gonna get the move tool and we can just simply move that along the blue axis, please. It's a lot easier if you just do this from an angle. There we go, so we're moving it along the blue axis now, which is obviously up and down. And let's move that closer to the side by, I reckon three millimeters. Let's get it pretty close. Uh, no, a bit too close. I reckon two then. Mirror the same for this side, two down. Okay, and now that gap in the middle looks a little bit too large. So let's bring those together one millimeter. So you can probably see how slow and tedious this is with just two dovetails. Imagine doing that with a wider case side and having to deal with each one independently. That's why I draw them out first. Yeah, I think that'll work. To be honest, I think what it is, is the one to six ratio actually looks a bit too steep in this case. I reckon a one to eight would actually look better. So a one to eight ratio, because we've gone 12 up, that means we need to go across 1.5 as opposed to two, which would uh, give us the one to six. So 1.5 millimeters across for every 12 units that go up will give us 1.8, sorry, one to eight ratio. Let's just draw that on top of the component again because it makes it easier. So 0 0.5, type it into there. We'll just slightly straighten that up. It's barely a change whatsoever, but I guarantee it will look a lot better afterwards. So a one to eight ratio there. I feel like I could close up that gap in the middle a little bit more. Kind of wish I drew this out on a piece of paper first now because all this messing around could have just so easily been avoided. Let's move them together one millimetre. Don't tell me I've got to move them 0.5 millimeters closer. Right, so bear in mind that we've drew these lines on top of the uh, component for now. So if we just edit this component, we can then trace over those lines that we've put in there. And that way it doesn't pick up any of those weird construction lines that we've got drawn all over the place now. Cool, so let's just move that back, see what's left behind. There we go, so all that rubbish that we drew on top of the component is now there. Let's just say goodbye to that and then edit this component and simply push these areas away. You may be able to see it's doing the same for the other side as well. Not sure why that one didn't disappear. Let's just quickly delete that. And obviously that shoulder line will not stay there either. We can get rid of that. Nice old spacing that. I don't remember the last time I laid out a one to eight ratio dovetail. I tend to do one to six nowadays, but I'm quite liking it. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm going back to my old roots. So the next thing I like to do is lay out the groove for the draw base. And the reason I do this now is because I can use the tails at the front to dictate the height of it because the groove needs to be within this tail here, like within that shoulder line particularly. If it goes below that, then when you groove the front, you'll end up seeing that groove on the end grain of the draw front. It's quite hard to explain, but as long as you make sure the groove is fully contained within the tail, you'll be absolutely fine. So let's quickly measure the distance underneath the tail here, uh, six millimeters. So let's make that groove seven millimeters up from the bottom just to give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, we'll hide this back one for now. So we'll go up seven millimeters. I'm drawing this on top of the component just so it doesn't stick to it. Then we'll edit the component and 
probably make it go in about five millimeters. Yeah, that'd be all right. Uh, and draw bottoms tend to be about six millimeters thick because it's usually plywood or MDF that will go in there. So six, and then we'll go back that away. And then we'll just push pull it back. It might stop on the shoulder line. Yep. Uh, and it's actually disappeared on the shoulder line. For example, look, I can look right through that now. And so because that has happened, if we just draw a line on the bottom here, it will recreate another solid that we can push pull all the way through. Oh no, it's gonna hit that shoulder line next. And we'll push it once more all the way through. There we go, there is our groove. And obviously we can get rid of these shoulder lines on the back of the tails as well. We do not need those there. Now we've made one error here in that we haven't made each draw side unique yet. So if I pan out and we have a look at the other one, you can see that the groove is now on this side. So before we start fixing that, let's make these unique. If I just make that one unique, for example, and then we will um, change the entity info. So this will be draw side uh, left. And then this one, change that to be draw side right. All right firstly, let's just get rid of uh, these lines in here because we don't need them. They're just gonna get in the way. Now, I wonder if I could do some jiggery here. If I do the option push pull thing, I'll push it that way. That is going to leave me a little mark on the other side, hopefully. Yes, there we go. So then we'll just pull this one out that way and push this side in five millimeters now. Uh, rub away this line, because we don't need that. And then push this in five millimeters instead. There we go. I don't know if that's a bit of a bodge job, but it worked absolutely fine. We just need to erase some of this stuff. Oh, don't worry if the components turn blue like that either. That does happen from time to time. I'm not entirely sure what it means. You can always recolor it afterwards. I am just gonna fix this line though. Uh, what you don't wanna do here is do a pen line when you do it. Because if, for example, I need to find the center of that draw side, if I do so, it's not going to find the center of it because that isn't one continuous line. It's gonna find the center of that shorter line that we've got on top. So what we wanna do really is erase all of these and we'll just get rid of these two at the back as well. And then we will re-put those shoulder lines back on. So that's now one nice continuous line and we should be able to find the midpoint of it quite easily. There we go. All right, that's good. Now let's get the old spectacles and unhide the drawback because now we can start working out how high that drawback needs to be. So if we get this into position, up against that. We obviously need to get access to the draw bottom from the back. And so if we edit this component, we're then going to push it up so that it is level with the top of the groove. And there we go, we've locked onto it there. And usually on the top of drawbacks, you tend to lower those down, you know, about three or four millimeters as well. This allows air to come up from the back of the draw as you're pushing it in. Because if that's a perfect seal, when you do so, it just creates an area of high pressure. And if you've got lots of drawers, it might end up pushing the rest of the drawers out, which is quite annoying. So by dropping that back, it just makes it a bit easier for air to escape. And it makes it easier for the, um, for the drawer to be inserted as well. Just get this other side into position as well. Alrighty, so now to start laying out the dovetails on the back of the drawer. There's always debate on whether you should dovetail the back of drawers. I tend to do it just because I like cutting them and I think it's a nice little feature when someone was to pull out the drawer, they're like, oh, he's gone through the effort of doing that. Pretty cool. So let's draw them. To start with, we have got a 90 degree pin going in here. So let's just draw that. And we've got a 90 degree pin going in level with this one here. Now, fortunately, the pen tool is detecting the midpoint of the back component, which has been put up against it. So that's quite handy. Let's just put a line there so that we've got something for reference. I reckon let's make this go in four millimeters. And then this ratio is quite tricky to work out because it's a 10 millimeter thick one and working that into a ratio involves maths, which I can't really be bothered to do. And so I'll probably just make this go down 4.5, for example. Yeah, that looks dovetaily. Let's make it five. Then we'll go two millimeters either side of this central line to give ourselves a four millimeter pin in the middle. Three down here. Let's just edit those and push them out of the way. And again, it's left us with a little bit of leftover material there. So let's just delete those as well. And we've got this little platform thing here that needs to go as well. Don't need that. And then here, this is where we'll add like a little um, angle thingy just to make the drawer easier to insert. I think going down two millimeters is absolutely fine. Uh, and then we'll edit the components and bring it up here and push that out of the way as well. In fact, what we could do here is just highlight the whole thing from a left to right and then delete all that. And that will get rid of the construction lines. So again, really handy with that 
dragging direction. Okay, and so because both these draw sides are now unique to one another, obviously it hasn't drawn it on the other ones, unfortunately. I could have kept them unique while laying out the back tails as well, but I just didn't in this case because I forgot. So we will just copy it across instead. Shift click on them, copy, 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 edit this component instead, paste it and get that locked onto that shoulder line. Edit the component and push everything out of the way. Now we can delete these as well. Don't know what that is. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so that's all the male parts of the joint sorted. Now let's get the sockets cut. So let's get these lined up on the internal shoulder there and just plop those on the side. Get these into position and then start editing the front component and simply trace around those tails. Again, this would be much easier if we had access to the solid subtract tools like we do on the pro version. Hide, and then what we'll do with them, just to save us even having to trace around the other ones, we'll just copy those, come around to the other side. Now, I've made a bit of an error here because I've got no reference of where that needs to be on this side. What I should have done is copied one of the pins as well. So if I copy that part instead, there we go, much better. Cool, that's done. So then the same on here. Where can we lock this? Where about there? and trace around it. So again with this, let's just copy that, that, and probably just the top one, and then push them in, and relock it on here, get that on the end, and then push those in independently as well. Right, spectacles, unhide all. Now we've just got to get a groove in the back of the front. Let's just connect that with the bottom of the groove on the sides. Uh, this gives you a slightly different symbol in that it's a intersection. It basically means it's not the end of a line, but it's where a component is crossing with another one, but it's not been officially declared as a join as such. It was very similar to the mortise that we cut in the last video where those two mortises joined, but there wasn't a boundary line around it. That's basically what's happening here. And that's what that little cross is, uh, is showing. So we've got that on the red axis. There we go. We'll do the same from the top of the groove. There's our little intersection. And again, that is gonna be pushed in five millimeters. So you can see here, this is why the groove needs to be contained within the tails, because if that was lower, then the groove starts cutting into the end grain around here. So that's why it's important to lay out dovetails on drawers before cutting the, uh, the groove. And then the only thing we've got to do now is get a draw base into it. So the way we're gonna do that is get the rectangle tool. Let's go right into this back corner here. And I kind of want to start back here. So there we go, we've got snap tracking. I've just held it here temporarily. And then it's going to detect that line, bringing it all the way out until we hit there. So it's found a nice little intersection for me there using the snap tracking tool. Click on that. And we're going to drag the rectangle all the way out to here. Put that in. And let's get that as a component before we do anything. So I find that it's easier if you get the draw flat like this, make sure there's nothing behind it and then just highlight that lower section using a left to right drag. So that should only have got the bottom of the draw. And then make component, draw base, edit component. And we're gonna bring that up. What was it, six mil, wasn't it? There you go, six mil, just snapped it onto the bottom of that. And before we put that into position, firstly, let's just get rid of some of these unsightly construction lines. We don't need any of them. Before we put it into position, let's highlight the entire thing and make this another component called draw. So now, when I want to move this, it will all move in unison. Whereas beforehand, when this wasn't a component, if I just undo it, if I wanna move it, it just takes the draw front with it, which isn't very useful. So that's why it's useful to have this all as one component. And then if we want to access any of these afterwards to slightly amend them, we just double click on that first, and then we can start choosing our other components from there. Double click on that and that will allow us to start editing that component. And obviously, if you've got loads of these drawers to make, you could then just copy that drawer and fit them all over the place, and those will start behaving the same as one another. It's quite a clever system, really. Let's get this in situ. And so that is one drawer in position, and we just give it a cheeky, a cheeky pull on the front. There we go. Look at those beautiful dovetails there. Lovely. Lovely blue dovetails. So there we go, that's how you construct a draw on Google SketchUp. Again, much easier if you've got the solid subtract tools. I know the professionals of you watching this, just for a laugh, you'll be wincing at the fact I'm having to do these manually. Yes, I know it's challenging, but we are doing this with the free SketchUp software for the benefit of the masses. So as always, if you found the video useful and you enjoyed it, then please do not forget to press the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video where we, um, I guess we're gonna start adding some color to this thing. I'll see you then.